the idea of getting uh, signals from the brain to do sort of simple things in the external world, there are obvious applications for this. Describe some of the applications of the work that you're working on. Right. So this BrainGate project that we're working on is literally to reconnect the brain to the outside world for people who are paralyzed, people who have had that connection broken, either by injury or by disease, such as a stroke or even ALS, as Stephen Hawking has. And the, what we do is we, for these individuals, we're placing a tiny sensor in the brain that will pick up the signals about what they want to do with their arm. We're bringing those signals to the outside. And because of the basic science that we've had, the basic knowledge that we have, we can interpret those signals pretty well, not great, pretty well, and then allow people who can't move at all to be able to interact with the world. And the first thing we did is had an individual interact with the computer in a very simple way to say, can you manipulate anything using direct brain to control? All right, let's, uh, let's see the first uh, animation here. Um, so the, Pong was one of the first things that we were able to do with computers. It shows something at a really high level that was going to you know, bring, <laughs> bring world peace. Very cerebral. Yes. yes. So here you hit, see a young man. His name is Matthew Nagel, and he's playing a video game. He's controlling that little blue Pong uh, device uh, with uh, uh, signals directly really? from his brain. You can see just his head with a plug, which, which we now have, a, have to actually connect the brain to a computer through a, a plug on his head. And he's moving that uh, cursor around, and he's moving the little uh, paddle around just by thinking about moving it left or right. And, and, and how do you measure that? How do you decode what's going on in there using this, this plug? Well, the inside his head is this baby aspirin-sized platform, and it has a, a hundred little hairs coming from it, and those go just into the brain surface and pick up electrical impulses from about a hundred of the millions of neurons that are there, sort of like little radio broadcast towers. And they look like not much when they come up, but we can interpret those. And we'll, we'll actually see one go by in a little bit. Uh, one of these channels of impulses go by as we show one of the movies. And, and who was the subject in, in the Pong? So the first individual, he was the first of now five people who have had this implant done in a very early stage pilot trial. And his name was Matthew Nagel, and he had a spinal cord injury at right. very high level. And did, did you say to Matthew, uh, hey, dude, we can put this plug in your head and you'll be able to play Pong? And he went, yeah, sign, sign me up for that. Well, he, he actually, one of his first, we, we had a uh, hand that he could open and close. And, and uh, the first time he said it, I, I delete the expletive, but he went, holy sh. <laughs> you can fill in the rest. Let me get a sense of, all right, the plug is in place. What do you say to Matthew? Um, do some stuff with your brain and we'll see if it moves anything, and then we begin to localize that? No, well, it was, one of, it was a big puzzle. We didn't know exactly what to say, but we knew that part of the brain is the part that, you know, when you pick up your toothbrush in the morning, that's the part that instructs your hands. So we said, imagine you're moving a computer mouse, and lo and behold, immediately the cells lit up, and when he thought left or right, you actually saw activity that these electrical impulses got greater for left or greater for right, and we sort of used those to decode this very primitive message in the brain. Now, would you need a separate chip? It seems a little crude here. You might have to have a bazillion of these things to actually do anything. Nope. The, the part of your brain that controls your arm sort of has a whole master set of plans for your whole arm. So even from a tiny patch of your brain, you can really orchestrate many, many different actions. That's something that, again, we've learned from science recently.